We choose our state of mind. And our physical circumstances don't dictate that state of mind. Remember we said if you worked out, that after, first afternoon you worked out after putting it off, that afternoon you didn't feel good physically, but mentally you felt really good about yourself? So your physical circumstances don't dictate your mental state. Your physical circumstances dictate actions that you need to take, things you need to do, again, taking personal responsibility for yourself to overcome the things that are in your way between where you are and where you want to end up. Let's apply this to work. When are you the most excited about your job? Yeah, even before that, that's during the employment. When is it the most exciting, the job you have? When are you the most excited about it? The first day. Actually, most of the time if we break that down, it's the day you get hired even before you go to work. Because you get hired, you're all enthusiastic, you're excited, you got a job, but tomorrow you don't have to show up, you show up next Monday. So I'm even more excited. I got a job, I've accomplished something, but I don't have to go to do any work that I don't want to do. No, tomorrow, I'm off. Okay, I'm the most excited about my job when I get the job. As we are employed, we're the most excited when we accomplish things, when we do things. But, as I get to know my company and as I get more familiar, everybody heard the phrase familiarity breeds contempt? It actually breeds boredom first before contempt. No matter how good your job is and good your company is, no matter how good your relationship is, what do you start to see the longer you're in it? Same old, same old. Same old, same old. Same. New day, same mountain, same problems, same headaches. And then it's even worse in a relationship issue because what do you start to notice? All the things that are wrong with the other person. The longer you have a customer, what do you get to know about them? Well, yeah, their flaws and their faults. And then if your attitude's not right, you start focusing on those. Let me ask you a question from a sales perspective. Who do you talk about, not even talk about, who do you think about the most of your customers? Which ones do you remember the quickest and right off the top? The really good ones are the ones that were a pain and, and it caught, you remember the problems. When you get together with your salespeople in your company, who do you talk about, the problems or the, the good ones? The problems. So by default, as a salesperson, who's managing your attitude? The bad customer. The customer that's difficult. I won't call them bad, but they're difficult. They're the ones that are causing you challenges. By default, they'll manage your attitude if you don't take it back. If you don't take control and develop these habits and traits, by default, the negative things in your life will start to manage your attitude.